It's been 12 years since The Room premiered in Hollywood. Called the Citizen Kane of bad movies, The Room's cult following spans four continents. This legendary bad movie has inspired cult fandom, celebrity followers, a musical, a video game, a book, and now a major motion picture starring James Franco and Seth Rogen. But amidst all this hubbub... <clears throat> uh, one question remains. What the hell happened? To all the random no-name actors... Who appeared in the room. What happened? A lot of bad shit! I'm Javier Juan Julio Hernandez Smith, and I'm a documentary filmmaker. Thank you. Many moons ago, before my calling as an auteur, I auditioned for the role of Mark in The Room. I didn't get the part. They told me I overacted and was terrible. For the past five years, I've been stalking, uh, following the actors from The Room. The camera B, target has legs. I repeat, the target has legs. Spending QT with the folks who should have been my BFFs. Asking the question, what happens when the roses wilt and the footballs deflate? What do they do? Where are they now? Ms. Juliet, uh, Ms. Danielle, I'm sorry. <laughs> the two first names thing is throwing me off. What do you want? My name is Javier Juan Julio Hernandez Smith, documentarian, uh, and you can call me JJ. J. I wanted to ask a few questions. Let me guess. JJ. J. J. You want to talk about the room? Maybe you <laughs> want to ask me about the recycled sex scenes. I was interested in the recycled sex or scenes. Or maybe you want to know about what that neck thing was. What was the thing on the neck? Yes. I don't know either. Maybe you want to ask me what it felt like for Tommy to like hump my stomach, my belly button in particular. So many burning questions about that. Let me tell you something. My stomach is hot, okay? You'd hump it. You'd hump it any day. I would hump your stomach any day. Um, were you asking me to? I... Get out! What? Why can't you people just leave me alone? I said, get out! Well, That's a promise! It's a very expensive camera. I... Sure, I had a slight drinking problem back then. And blow and, and meth and coke and heroin and weed. But this is California, so nobody really counts that anyway. The point is, when I took off my red dress, it was like all of my problems were gone. Blue is my color now, and I am as clean as a whistle. I know what you're thinking. No, this is not Scotchka. Actually, back in the day when I was drinking, I found that um, Burbkeela was something that I really liked. It has like a really awesome kick, you know? But this, this is lemonade. Because let's be honest, life has given me a lot of fucking lemons. I absolutely adore the room and everything about it. And Tommy V. Saw is a genius and handsome, too. That long black hair, oh, he looks just like Fabio. What I don't get is why everyone laughs at the movie. Breast cancer is no joke. Poor Claudette. She probably had to do chemo. I just hope that she gets a nice, perky new pair of tits out of it. At my age, it's not easy keeping things up, if you know what I mean. Uh, not that I've had any work done. <laughs> but I just got the results of the tests back. And these are definitely 100% real. Sure, from time to time, lines from the room creep into my life. I just got the test results back. And I definitely have shingles. Athlete's foot. Asthma. Partial hearing loss. Tapeworm. Mm. Do you understand life? Do you? Well, obviously not if you think the room is just one big joke. 
Uh, hemorrhoids. Oh. oh. Yes, definitely. One thing I definitely don't have. Grandchildren. Lizanne, how would you like to meet an interesting new man, huh? Don't you think he kind of looks like Fabio? I think he's cute. If you had children, they'd probably have all that lovely, dark, thick hair. Wouldn't that be nice? Little, thick, hairy children? You don't have to give me a bunch. Not getting any younger. So, after the room, I met my husband, who... Okay, this is a really funny story. He turned out to be my first stalker. I love the limelight. So how did we meet? Actually, it's an interesting story. It started- I was sitting in a tree waiting for her to come home. I was coming back from this terrible date. And so I saw him and obviously I screamed. She and has a piercing scream that haunts my dreams. <laughs> and so he fell out of the tree and he hurt himself and then I took him to the hospital. And then from there, it was, it was almost like- Fate. Like God intervened, gave me a little nugget. <laughs> oh, the interesting part. Oh, she paid all my hospital bills. I'm uninsured. Yeah. He's so affectionate, you know? I mean, everything I've ever wanted. Like, he gives me all the attention I could ever need. And and this, this, <laughs> I'm glad he's showing it to you. It's, it's, it's actually something that he came up with. It's called, it's called the, it's called the anaconda. <laughs> and sometimes I forget the safe word. Um, you have to say it. Um, mouse. Harpoon. Um. Oh. And now, he is no longer stalking. He agreed. Right, honey? Right. I just collect things now. <laughs> You're so sentimental. The more I discovered about the room actors, the more obsessed I became. How? Why? When? Where? In what manner? To what extent? These were the pressing questions I needed answered. And I wouldn't stop. I couldn't stop. Until I had unwrapped the enigma wrapped in a conundrum wrapped in old, dirty, coffee-ground newspapers that were the room actors. Because once you've been inappropriately groped by the room in a dark, noisy theater, You'll never ever be the same. Stay tuned for another titillating episode of The Room Actors. Where are they now? Into the room we go. Who is this? To the green screen of San Francisco. I didn't agree to this. Put something strong in your glass. She's singing. Because you can't unsee. Tommy's white ass. <laughs>